Hello everyone, it's Cassie and welcome back for another scrapbookpal.com video. Today I'm going to be making a slimline card using a new product by Lawn Fawn, but our stamp set is going to be the Lawn Fawn Coaster Critters along with the matching dies, and here is that brand new small slimline with lift the flaps, and I am excited to make a card with this because oh, I've had this idea in my head for a while. I have my cardstock cut down to eight and a half inches by seven inches, and I'm going to go ahead and score that at three and a half inches. We'll just go ahead and do that and get that ready to go. And then um, and I'm using my score buddy to do so. And then I have these other pieces of cardstock that are cut to three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So I have two of them and I am going to ink blend on both of them using the same colors. This first color is some Distress Oxide Blueprint Sketch and I am just using my mini ink blending tool and doing most of the ink blending with this color. So about three fourths of my paper uses the Blueprint Sketch. And then I'm gonna come in with a darker color. This is the Chipped Sapphire and it seems to be almost dry. Uh, it's mostly because I'm trying to hold down the paper with one hand and just kind of dot my mini ink blending tool. Um, but we get there, eventually we get there. So I'll just keep blending and trying to keep making that color a little bit darker. And it's interesting how when you're ink blending, it just kind of looks like a hot mess, at least for me anyway. It starts out looking a hot mess. And then as you continue to blend, you continue to bring in color and you smooth out those colors, it really starts to look like something cool. Uh, my idea with this is that I wanted a nighttime sky with those coaster critters. There's just something about the fair at night. So I'm going to do both panels the exact same way. And now that they're ready, I'm going to just bring in some splats of water uh, because these are distress oxides. They will react to the water and as, as it dries, you can tell it's, it's just giving that cool look. So I'll wipe that up and I like how it looks, you know, kind of like stars. And then I'm also going to bring in some Lawn Fod liquid stardust and I'll splatter that all over the background and I'll bring in a little bit more and then I'll show you once I'm done with all the splatter and it's getting fairly dry, how cool it actually looks. So uh, all that splatter on there, it just shines in the light, which is just a neat look. So there are both of those and I have a blob there. I'm just going to wipe that up. And now I'm going to move on to my stamping. I've got some uh, Copic friendly cardstock in my Misty and I am going to stamp out all the pieces that I need. I need five coasters so I'm going to add five of those pieces and you'll see why it seems excessive but I do need that and I also need seven of the little cars and I need several little bears and fox and um, bunnies and just little pieces they can hold on to as well. Let's jump right into our coloring for three out of the five coasters I'm going to use the color E59 or Walnut and I'm not going to add any shadowing to the coasters. It just wasn't necessary with those small lines uh, because the scene is really the star of the show here and the coloring really isn't in this case. But I'm coming in with that E59 and I'll do, um, like I said, I'll do three of the different coasters. They're not different, but three coasters. And then I'm going to come in and do two of the five using another darker color. Uh, and that is the E49, which is Dark Bark. I'll use the same E59 or Walnut color for a couple of stands. I don't use both of these, I only end up using one. And then we'll come in with some R27 or Cadmium Red for the banner on our ticket and our food stand. And then we're going to come in with some Toner 1 as our gray. It just made sense with having, you know, Lots of warm and cool colors in this one. RV11 for our cotton candy. And then we'll color our little bunny with some of that T1. And then we'll bring in the RV11 again for his ears and his cheeks. And then we're going to color our little fox using E80, which is brown. And then we'll bring in E07, which is light mahogany, as our darker color. He's a cute little fox. And then our bear will be the E59, which is the walnut, and then E49, which is our dark bark. So I'm going to try and get that up on the screen for you so you can see it, but it, my camera will eventually focus in on there. And we'll just add a little bit of shading and shadowing where I think it will look good. Then we'll move on to coloring one of the cars. We'll do R27, that cadmium red again. 
I do end up bringing in some R89, which is dark red, for a little bit of shadowing and shading. Uh, I just don't show that. And then we have some Y02, which is canary yellow, and then we've got our toner gray 7 for tires. One of the, or two of the balloons will be BG05, which is that holiday blue, and then we'll bring in some peacock blue, which is B06, and then shade that out a little bit. Then we'll bring in that Y02 again, along with some Y17, which is golden yellow. And then for our pinks, we're going to bring in some RV55, which is hollyhock. And then once we're done with all of our coloring, we will die cut all those out using the matching dies. I need a ground for my coasters and my little critters, so I am cutting a one inch strip by eight and a half inches, two of them in fact, and then I'm going to glue those down to both of my panels once I realize that that looks pretty good like that. I don't know if y'all have ever really been to the fair. I um, am from a small town and so we had county fairs and you know 4-H and all that fun stuff and goodness sakes it was so much fun. My dad did never let us ride the rides but um, we did get to play the games on occasion and of course eat the food. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, fond, fond memories of the rodeo and just being at the fair. All right, now I'm going to pull in part of that small slimline with lift the flaps die. This is the outline. I'm going to tack this down and we're going to run this through our die cutting machine. And then I'll pull in my lift the flap, just kind of testing where I want that. And then we'll start adhering all of our pieces down. So I realized with the coaster, if I want it to line up perfectly, I do need to trim off that one edge and then I can make it look like a continuous roller coaster. And you'll notice that I have the darker roller coaster in the background. So that was the reason I colored the coasters different colors. Um, kept the one in the background to be a little bit darker. And then this way it can almost look like maybe uh, it's a part of the same coaster, but that's just the loop on the other end, you know. So I'll start gluing pieces down, get the back ones first, and then we'll glue down our ones that are supposed to be up close next. And that'll even be down just a little bit. They won't be on the same line, the horizon line there. And then we'll start lining up our pieces. So that's part of the reason why I kept all those other pieces hanging off the edge a little bit. This is the way I was able to uh, get our pieces to match perfectly because and you wouldn't have to do something like this, but I really wanted a continuous scene from outside to inside. Um, you know, with that lift a flap, you could do all kinds of fun stuff. You could just have little critters or something inside. You wouldn't have to have it be a scene, but I just thought this would be so much fun. So if you are making a scene, this is uh, the way that I found that was easiest to do it is having those pieces that stick out of the edge. That way you can line your stuff up a little bit easier that way. And so I'll just start pinning all these pieces down using some Nouveau Deluxe liquid glue, which is what I've been using the whole time. And then it'll be cohesive from inside to outside. So now we have these two scenes, both the same. And I'm going to line up our lift the flap die. And I'll tack that down with a little bit of washi tape, or I mean um, some purple tape. Run that through my die cutting machine, and honestly, it actually did shift a little bit. I know there's a lot of layers here. Uh, I ran this through my die cutting machine. One time was enough. It, it actually cut through all the pieces. But, um, you know, just be aware that you are cutting through several layers. In this case, some parts, it was almost three layers, but it did work fine. And now I'm going to start getting ready to tack down my little cars on the outside. And they're going to be empty on the outside because we're gonna have little surprises on the inside, which is part of the fun of the lift a flap. So I'm just putting those down where I want them, where I think they'll look good. And then when we go to tack it down, we're gonna use some 3D foam squares and some crafty foam tape, both from, uh, by Scrapbook Adhesive. So I'll peel off all the release paper on all of those. Uh, obviously you wanna avoid the flaps themselves because otherwise they won't lift. <laughs> and then I'll just use the coasters and line those up with the ones on the background. And I'll push everything down. And you'll see it lines up pretty nicely. And so now we have a little bit of room to be able to put our elements on the inside. 
So I'm going to take those little cars and we're going to put a little critter in each one and some of them will be holding things. In this case, the little bear is going to be holding a balloon and it's going to look like it's going behind him, but he's going to be our first little guy. So his balloon would be going, you know, backwards down the roller coaster. I don't recommend, you know, holding balloons or cotton candy or anything like that if you're on a coaster, but you know, hey, these are a little cartoons, so they can do what they want. <laughs> I'll put the little fox in one and he's going to be holding some cotton candy. And then I'll get him tacked on the inside. And then our next little guy is going to be a bunny. And I did toy with putting something in his little paws. I honestly was going to put the balloons in his paws. And you'll see that I end up having an issue with that. And I even put the glue on his paw and he put, I just put the balloons right in his paw. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't dry yet. So I'm going to try and put this on the inside. I'll notice that it's not going to fit no matter how I try and figure that out. So I will just remove the balloons and then we'll put some glue on him and tack him down on the inside. So how fun is that? Little empty cars on the outside, little critter filled cars on the inside. We do need a sentiment. So I have grabbed a strip of that same cardstock. I'm going to ink this up with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, which is what I also um, stamped all of my images. I used Memento Tuxedo Black because it is Copic friendly. And so I'm stamping out that sentiment. Have a thrilling birthday. And I'm going to freehand cut this with my Cutterby scissors. And then I'll even give them a flag banner. Yes, I know I am throwing caution to the wind by just hand cutting because I don't necessarily cut straight, but the flag banner saves me. <laughs> so I cut into the middle and then each of those edges I cut right into that as well. All right, to tack that down, I do need to put some foam tape on the very bottom and then I'll put liquid glue on the top. And then I can just put that right centered underneath the coasters. And I can't stop there. I do have to decorate the inside. So I'm going to grab that last coaster that I have and I'll adhere that down using that same Nuvo Deluxe liquid glue. And I'm also going to put one of the little food um, booths inside with a little bear inside of him and he's going to be holding some cotton candy. The original idea was to have a booth on the outside, but there just wasn't room. And so this is what we have. Now I do have to put a car on that roller coaster, so we're going to grab the bunny and we'll put him inside and he can hold all those balloons, which is fun. And I don't have a sentiment for the inside. I thought I would leave it at that. That way I can write as much as I want to the recipient. Oftentimes when I have a card like this, it's my entire family signing it. So that'll give us plenty of room. And then we'll use that same liquid glue to tack down our card panel to our card base. And then that's actually going to finish off the card here. Really fun card. Loved this. Totally want to make a bunch more with all these flaps because you could just go crazy with these flaps. And it's slimline. I love slimline. I'm so into slimline right now, as I'm sure pretty much everybody is. So check that out. Yay! All right, so if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by.